I thank you, Father, that you are so faithful. I thank you, Father, that you have so much love, compassion, forgiveness. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that you have called us your friend. Those who have accepted Yeshua, your son, as their Lord and Savior and have a relationship with you. Oh, hallelujah. You are Abba Father, our daddy, our spiritual daddy. And we thank you so much uh, for your mercy, your grace. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, to comfort us, to guide us, and to protect us, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you for your anointing. And Father, I just pray that your anointing be in this place today. I pray, Father, that every person that listens to this service live online will be blessed, that you will meet them there by your presence, by your spirit, and you'll stir up the gifts within them, Father. You'll speak to their hearts. Father, I pray that you convict us inside, spiritually, of any sin, anything that's in our life that is not in line with you, with your word. And I pray, Father, you wash us clean of that, Father. I pray, Father, you give us a heart of repentance that we cry out to you, Abba, Father, for forgiveness. And I thank you, Lord, that you provide that forgiveness through the blood of Yeshua. Hallelujah. The blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Yeshua, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for your blood sacrifice. I thank you so much, Father God, that you... Uh, sent your son to be a sacrifice because you loved us so much. Father, you said that while we were yet in sin, Christ died for us. Oh, what a wonderful sacrifice. What a wonderful act of love. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. I thank you, Father God, that not only did you send your son, Yeshua, to die for us, but you did not leave him in the grave. Hallelujah. But three days later, he rose again and took victory over death. And now, after he has ascended into heaven, Lord, we can call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for salvation, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. So, such an honor and privilege to be called a child of God. To be in the family of God. To be accepted into your kingdom. To be called, chosen. Oh, hallelujah. We don't take that lightly, Father. We love you and we thank you for this time that we can come, Lord, virtually together and worship you in spirit and in truth. And I pray again, Father, you just touch every person's heart that is here with us virtually and just meet them where they're at and touch their hearts, Lord. Pour out your spirit upon them. Give them ears to hear and a heart to receive your word today. We thank you for that. Lord, we love you. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for those of you who are with us. And I just encourage you to, to follow along and worship today. And remember the Lord. Uh, said in his word that he's looking for those who worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you want the Lord to come and visit you and meet with you and commune with you, worship in spirit and truth today. I encourage you to uh, spend time interacting here on Facebook Live, commenting and, and praising the Lord together. Hallelujah. Encouraging one another. Thank you, Lord. Oh, he's so worthy. Amen. Come on. He's so worthy. Come on, just tell him he's worthy today. Come on, participate with me today. Come on, tell him he's worthy. Tell him how worthy he is. You are worthy, Father. You're so worthy of our praise and our adoration. Oh, we lift you up. We magnify your name. We exalt you today, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody, come on, just somebody type in there. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. Come on, tell him how worthy he is. Thank you, Father. You're so worthy. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. I want to recognize today, you know, that when the Lord had the, the temple, the, the, the tabernacle made, and he set up the Holy of Holies, and only the high priest could go in once a year and commune with the Lord and 
make sacrifices for the people and they tied a rope around his leg because the presence of God is so powerful that if there's any sin in the high priest's life, he would fall dead and they would have to pull him out by the rope. And do you know what else was in the Holy of Holies? It was the Ark of the Covenant. And I want you to think about the significance of that Ark. It held the Ten Commandments, the laws of God. His covenant that he made with us. It's so important that it was right there and he had the cherubim, the angels on the top of the ark and that's where it's called the mercy seat and the presence of God came from there. Think of the significance of that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your covenant. Oh, hallelujah. Now we have that blood covenant with Yeshua, with God through Yeshua. So we can meet with him in the Holy of Holies. Commune with him. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. You know, this last, uh, this, this few days ago, when Passover was here, we, we had a Passover Seder meal. And it represents our communion with God because of the blood of Yeshua. The blood of the Lamb that they, they, they spread on the doorposts so that the, the, uh, the spirit of death would pass over them. See, the spirit of death passes over us as well because we have the blood of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad about that? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy. Ooh, hallelujah. Victory is mine. Come on, somebody say, victory is mine. See, because victory is ours because of what the Lord has done for us. You know, it's so good to be on the winning side. Amen. <laughs> we already know what happens to Hasatan. We know the end of the book. We know the end of the story. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So worthy, Lord. Man, I am just so excited for what the Lord is doing. I just feel his presence in this place. And I pray that you feel his presence in your home or wherever you're at at this time as well. And we got to honor his presence. Amen. Honor his presence. Thank you, Lord. So today, oh my goodness, we're going to have a good time today. This is the opportune time to discuss the attacks of the enemy. I'm going to fix this camera just a little bit, if you don't mind. The attacks of the enemy because as you know, in our land today there is a big attack from the enemy, Hasatan, and he's trying to take out God's children and many people across the earth have died because of this coronavirus and the Bible says, if we will humble ourselves and pray, we'll hear from heaven. He'll heal our land. we got to humble ourselves and pray. I preached about that not too long ago. So I won't get into it now. But we need to understand how the enemy works. And we need to understand his attacks. We need to understand his strategies. We need to understand what the Bible calls the wiles of the devil. That's the strategies of the enemy. Okay? Sorry about that. Thank you, Lord. The wiles of the devil. The strategies of Hasatan. You know, if he has strategies against you, don't you think you should know what his strategies are and have your own strategies in place to defeat the enemy and for you not to be, be defeated? If you agree with me, come on, just type in amen. Hallelujah. You can interact here today and communicate. I can see your messages and I'm communicating. I'm here with you. Just like you're in the sanctuary here. I'm here with you. We're, we're communicating and interacting. Praise the Lord. So, the attacks of the enemy. And before I get into the sermon, I want to 
take a moment because this is what they call Easter weekend. And for those of you that may not be familiar with the roots of that, Easter is from the word Ishtar, which is the pagan goddess of fertility. It's actually a pagan word. And we have adopted into the church for thousands of first for many, many years now, a lot of pagan practices. And we have Easter bunnies and Easter eggs, you know, egg laying bunnies and all this craziness that distracts from the truth of the word of God. And yes, it's exciting that Jesus has resurrected, Yeshua has resurrected, he's rose from the dead and ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us. Hallelujah. We can rejoice in that because he defeated death. He defeated the enemy. Hallelujah. See, I want you to understand that the enemy, Hasatan, he thought that he was taking victory over Yeshua. Can you imagine this time when uh, all this was going on in Yeshua's ministry and he's waking people up to the truth and he's shocking some people and the Jewish people were, can, you know, uh, arguing and fighting and, and confused and some followed Yeshua, they accepted the truth, but many rejected him and persecuted him. See, the devil was using them to try to take victory over Yeshua, but God had a greater plan than the wiles of the devil. <laughs> He had a greater strategy to turn what the enemy meant for evil. He turned it around for the good to provide salvation through the blood of Yeshua. Hallelujah, aren't you glad? Amen. See, Hasatan will always use his little minions that are not submitted to Almighty God. He sure will. See, and that, to do his dirty work, right? If you open yourself up to the enemy, to be used by him because you're not submitting to Almighty God. Definitely the enemy will use you. He'll deceive you. The Bible says that he can even uh, possibly deceive the very elect. God's chosen people. So we have got to be very, very careful. We've got to be very wise and have this insight to the wiles of the devil and how he works. John 10.10 10 says that Satan is out to steal, kill, and destroy. And I, I know you've heard that many times, but I want you to take this super, super serious today. See, but the good news is he was out to steal, kill, and destroy. He was out to destroy Yeshua, our Lord. But God turned that around and provided salvation for us. Hallelujah. The more you grow as a Christian, I want you to get this. Hopefully, hopefully you'll take notes today. If you have a pen and paper or a device, you can take notes. The more that you grow as a Christian, the brighter your light is going to shine. And the brighter your light shines, the more the enemy wants to put your lights out. <laughs> All right? My mama said, I'm gonna used to say, I'm gonna knock your lights out <laughs> when I was a kid. Satan wants to knock your lights out. And people don't like... Um, people don't like the light, you know, the, the minions that, that, that the enemy uses. They don't like the light on them too bright. So, so they're also going to try to put your light out. See, when your light shines really bright, it reveals the sin of others. It makes people uncomfortable. And that's okay. Let your light shine. Don't walk in darkness so that other people that are in darkness are comfortable with you. No, 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 no. We are not to be like the world. Okay? We are supposed to be God's peculiar people. Uh, a city set on a hill. A light in the darkness for people to see. They'll either gravitate to it or they're going to be afraid to enter into it. Hallelujah. Many people are afraid to enter into the light because their deeds will be exposed. So just let your light shine brighter. These people are going to gossip about you. They're going to lie about you. They're going to defame your character. In an attempt to destroy 
your reputation as a child of God or hurt you in some way. See, the enemy wants to disable you because God has made you able. He has given you his grace, his ability to, to be effective in his kingdom. By his spirit, he's given you the ability. He's made you able. And the devil wants to make you disabled. He wants to take away your ability. He wants you to walk in fear, worry, doubt, and have anxiety. However, he forgets one thing. Hallelujah. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But there's some strategies that we have got to put in place as the children of Almighty God to conquer the enemy and to avoid being defeated by his strategies. We're going to talk about that a bit today. Hallelujah. See, the world, I want you to know that the world does not realize that they're crippled by their sin. They don't realize that Hasatan is using them. They don't get it. Many of them don't even believe in Satan. They don't understand that they're being used by Satan. And therefore, they're going to be used by Satan. And so we got to pray for them. Amen? We've got to follow the Great Commission and go and share the gospel and get people baptized, get them saved. Just like um, recently I was witnessing to a guy on, uh, maybe he's following us today, I don't know. Uh, God bless you, uh, Farhan, brother, if you are listening today. Uh, uh, a brother that, he, he was Muslim, and just a couple days ago, and praise the Lord, uh, I sent him a text and asked him if he would like to become a Christian. It was just as simple as that. He says yes. <laughs> It doesn't have to be difficult, family. And so I, I, I shared the gospel with him. I sent him one of my videos on how to be saved. And he prayed to receive Christ and, and gave his heart to Jesus. And, and uh, we rejoice with him. Hallelujah. But the enemy doesn't want that to happen. He's going to stop you. He's going to try to cripple you or put you in fear that you're going to be uh, rejected. He'll give you all kinds of fears. All kinds of fears. And we have got to conquer those fears by faith. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. See, we need to know that there's an enemy out there that wants to destroy you as a child of God. And we need to be ready for battle. We need to be battle ready, family. Battle ready. And so, first of all, we need to know what Satan, or more accurately, the Satan, or Hasatan, we need to know what that means, okay? Satan means deceiver. That's the definition of Satan. And so he is the deceiver. Hasatan means the deceiver. And so... Why do we even need to be concerned about the deceiver and his deceit? Well, since we know that he is out to steal, he's out to kill, and he's out to destroy, to destroy, then you might want to be ready for that. Does that make sense? If someone told you that someone was coming to your house tonight with a gun to attack your family, would you do anything to prepare for that, just in case? See, we've got to be ready. Our, our, our United States military is ready for any attacks. They have built, been building strategies for years to conquer the enemy and take victory in war. See, we've got to do the same thing, family, because Satan wants to kill you, and we have got to be battle ready. We've got to be prepared for his attacks. All right, so how do we prepare? If you're taking notes, number one, how to prepare for battle, for his attacks. Number one is never walk in fear. Never walk in fear. You've heard me say it many times, fear is false evidence appearing real. 
And the, the devil's going to try to intimidate you. He's going to try to uh, get you to walk in fear so that you make mistakes and that he can take advantage of you. Never walk in fear. Number two, always remember that God promises to be by your side. He promises to be with you. He says, fear not, like hundreds of times in the Bible. Fear not, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. Over and over and over again. He also says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. God's got your back, family. God's got your back. Hallelujah. Number three. Number three on how to prepare for war. We've got to put on the full armor of God. We find that in Ephesians 6, verse 11 through 18. Put on the full armor of Almighty God. Let's go through those pieces so that you know what your armor is and you know how to put it on. We need to understand this. The first one is he says to that your loins be girt about with truth. Now, I think a lot of Christians do not understand what this phrase means. Your loins girt about with truth. This is actually really important. Notice this is the first thing that he mentions. Okay? This is not just talking about uh, having the truth of the Word of God. He talks about that later with the Spirit, the, uh, the sword of the Spirit, which he calls the Word of God. Okay? This one, when he talks about your loins being girt about with truth, I want to give you a word picture here. Okay? I wish I had it on a slide or something to show you, but back in the day, everyone, they, they wore these robes. Okay? They had on this gown. It's like a long dress and then a robe that went over the top with a rope that wrapped around their waist. And when they tried to do things like run, their legs wouldn't stretch out far enough because that the type of clothing they had on, it would stop them. They had restrictions. They tried to bend over. Their knees would get stuck. You know, ladies, if you ever had a tight dress on, you try to open your knees and bend over or you try to run, you know. And so... It, it restricted them. And girding your loins, what they would do is they would take this cloth, this groin cloth, and they would pull it up and they would wrap, they would tuck it in or wrap it around their waist and it would give them freedom with their legs so that they can move about. Hallelujah. Do you see that picture? Okay? So we've got to gather up our loose clothing We've got to lift up all the things that are slowing us down and hindering us from moving freely in the truth. I want you to catch this, try to get revelation of this. There's so many things that we have in Christianity that have robbed us of the truth because the deceiver is out there to steal the word of God from you. And so we got to remove those things that are hindering us false doctrines and all these, these things, uh, traditions of man that are uh, uh, they're stealing the power of God from you. Okay? we got to lift those things up. we got to wrap the belt of truth around our waist and have clarity on the will of God so that we can move freely in God's kingdom. See, we have thoughts. I want you to think about this. We have thoughts that are sometimes tripping us up and we have to return to the truth of who we are in Christ so that we don't allow those thoughts to cause us to fall into sin. Hebrews 12, 1, it says, lay, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Well, how are you going to run with that long thing on? you got to gird up your loins. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we can run the race. Are you with me? Amen. Give me lots of hearts. Praise the Lord. 
That's for Jesus. Amen. God's word. God wants us to run our race. But how are we going to run effectively if we have this sin weighing us down and holding us back? We have to walk in truth. So that's number one. Is your loins being girt about with truth. The second piece of the armor that is listed is the breastplate of righteousness. We cannot allow the enemy to get to your heart. How many of you, you've had this experience before where you did not have on your breastplate and the enemy got to your heart and he, he was trying to destroy you, causing all this pain and fear and uh, confusion in your life? See, I've been through it. And it's called the, actually the breastplate of faith and love if you look in 2 Thessalonians 5.8. So faith is not only used as a shield, like we are going to learn here in a moment, but also as a breastplate. The breastplate of faith and love. In other words, if you want to guard your heart from the enemy, learn how to walk in faith and learn how to walk in love. Hallelujah. Faith and love will protect your heart. Okay? And part of that faith, I believe, is wisdom. Because you're believing and trusting in God's word. And he will give you the spirit of wisdom to know how to love, to help protect your heart. So what is righteousness? If we're talking about the breastplate of righteousness, well, number one, it's obeying God's word. That's what righteousness is. Doing what's right means doing what God said. See, and this is where the world does not understand. They have their own thoughts and understanding of what is right and what is wrong. Well, the problem is if they're not getting their, uh, their, their information from an infallible source, which is the word of Almighty God, the creator of the universe, then they're going to have fallible thinking. They're going to have a foundation that is weak that they cannot build upon because it will fall. We build our foundation, we build upon the foundation of truth, amen, which is God's holy word. So that is righteousness, obeying God's word. What is right is based on God's word, not man's word, amen. We have faith in God's word and we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, our soul, and all of our strength. Hallelujah. The breastplate of faith and love. So what's the third piece of the armor? The Bible says to, that your feet should be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we girded up our loins with truth so that we can go freely. We get rid of all these thoughts. We cast down things, our thoughts and weights that are holding us back. We're free to move forward. We put on the breastplate of love, of faith and love, the breastplate of righteousness, obeying God's word, and then we shh. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So therefore, we need to read and study the word of God. We need to carry the message of peace. That's what it means. The gospel means the good news, the message. We need to carry the message of peace and share it with the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Share it with the world. Probably most of you that are watching right now, I see you doing that on social media. You share the word of God with the world. But don't stop with social media. God will put people into your life and don't just put out posts that, that I mean, that's great. Put out posts that are encouraging, that share scriptures and encourage people. But when people comment on it and you don't know that person, you don't know if they, if they have a relationship with God, Send them a message. Communicate with them. Share the love of Christ. And maybe what happened with Brother Farhan, the Muslim, the previous, uh, the other day, maybe what happened with him giving his life to the Lord will also happen with the people that you communicate with and share the gospel of peace with. Hallelujah. We're to speak the word of God to the enemy. 
I want you to visualize that. Matter of fact, we're going to get back to that kind of in a moment. Okay? But prepare yourself with God's word to carry that word out to the world and share it with them. A word, a message of peace. See, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive a spirit of peace, and comfort, and joy. Hallelujah. The next piece of the armor, it says, above all. Now, I thought this was interesting because it says above all, meaning mo most importantly here, but it wasn't the first piece of the armor to put on. See, there's an order here, but there's also a priority too. So he's telling us in what order we're supposed to put this armor on, but now, after you've done these things, this one here is going to be more important than the rest. Above all, take the shield of faith. See, we need our defensive mechanism. We need a shield of faith. Above all, for the purpose of battle and to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That's the purpose of the shield of faith. So when the enemy attacks, casts out his sword or whatever, or his darts or whatever he has, his accusations against you, calamity, um, there's so many sins that can, people can commit against you. And many evil things the enemy can send your way to try to make you anxious and walk in fear and, and uh, trip you up. He says all you need is the shield of faith when he shoots those darts at you. Why? It's going to be as simple as blocking that dart by faith. Meaning trusting with trusting in God with full joy and confidence. See, that's what we mean by faith. Trusting in God with full joy and confidence. That's how we put up our shield of faith. And therefore, those darts, those fiery darts that come at us, they are not going to affect us. They're not going to hurt us. They're not going to bring us down. Amen. The next piece of the armor is the helmet of salvation. Now it's interesting actually, because we're in Ephesians 6, but 1 Thessalonians 5.8 mentions it as, mentions the helmet as a hope of salvation, right? So spelling it out that our, we hope in, our hope is in Christ, our, our faith is in Christ, we believe in Him and that's how we receive salvation. But the helmet of salvation, we need to remember, is going to protect our thought life. If we're not careful, Hasatan will come, the deceiver will plant thoughts into your head. He'll, he'll do things to get you focused in the wrong direction to get you off the straight and narrow path. And remember the scripture says that we are to take every thought captive, bring it into obedience of Christ. Anything that is not of God here, we cast it down. We handcuff it. We take it into captivity. We say, no, 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 devil. You're not going to make me go that direction and think those thoughts. I'm a, a child of Almighty God, righteous. I am righteous through the blood of Yeshua. Hallelujah. So make sure you're putting on your helmet of salvation. As soon as you need to start recognizing, first of all, okay, we need to recognize what the attacks are from the enemy. If your thoughts are not based on faith, and godliness and righteousness if you have worry doubt anxiety fear you know those thoughts are not from God the devil wants to cause you to be tormented on the inside the Bible says that uh, perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment those who fear are not made perfect in love he will torment you on the inside when you allow yourself to have certain thoughts because you did not put on your helmet of salvation. Now notice, it's the helmet of salvation. It's not the helmet of something else. It's the helmet of salvation. Why? Because not only do we accept Yeshua in our heart, 
But we also have to believe with our head. We have to, we have a thought life. And if our thought life is not protected, our beliefs are not protected here. The enemy can take you out. He can cause you to backslide, cause you to live in sin, cause you to live in fear. So put on that helmet of salvation, praying daily, casting down thoughts that are not of God. The next piece of the armor is the sword of the Spirit. The Bible says, which is the Word of God. What is the Word of God? The Word of God is God. God's Word is the Bible. And the Bible is God's Word. And the Word of God is the will of God. Hallelujah. Which we also know has become flesh and dwelt among us. In 1 John, I'm sorry, in John 1.1, 1, 1, says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, which is Yeshua, our Messiah. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent and intents of the heart. Woo! Hallelujah! We have got to have this sharp two-edged sword as a piece of our armor. It's the word of Almighty God. And that's why it's important that you protect yourself with the other pieces of the armor so you don't get deceived by Hasatan, the deceiver. Because the word of God will divide the truth from the enemy's deceit so that we are able to discern what is good, what is right, what is wrong. You're not going to be able to discern that without the Word of God, without the Spirit of God, without the double-edged sword. Amen. I'm going to read that again. For the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit, which is really... <laughs> You can call Yeshua a sword. Hallelujah. His words have revealed what is truth unto us. He is the sword. And he will cut down the middle and say, no, this is a lie. This is the truth. But it's quick, it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. See, we get confused. What is the soul? What is the spirit? He says, I understand that people get confused on what is the soul and what is the spirit, but even the sword of the spirit, the word of God, will divide the two and reveal to you which is which. Hallelujah. And of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Where's your discernment, family? Do you have discernment that helps you to, to know the thoughts and intents of the heart, discerning what is right and wrong in your heart, what is right and wrong in your thoughts. Because if you don't know what is right and wrong in your thoughts, how in the world are you going to take into captivity those thoughts here that are not of God and cast them down? If you don't know, you're going to meditate on them. See, recognize that they are from Hasatan, that he's out to steal, kill, and destroy. So if those words have anything to do with destroying you, killing you, and stealing what God has given to you, then recognize those as from the enemy. The Bible says that he, God, has come to give life and life more abundantly. If your thoughts are based on the abundant life that God provides for us, and faith and hope and love and joy and goodness and righteousness, you know it's from God. Hallelujah. Cast all the other junk down because it's not from God. And let's follow what the Word says next. The next important part of taking victory with the armor of God is right there in the next verses in Ephesians. It says in verse 18, to pray always. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, uh, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Now, this is also connected to 1 Thessalonians 5.17. It says, pray without ceasing. That means 
And I hear a lot of people just say an attitude of prayer throughout the day. No, it's not just an attitude. It's a communication with our Father. We need to have this right so that we can have this right. When I'm talking to you, I want to also be listening to the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Okay? And so it says pray always. That's number one. Number two is with pray all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So we got to pray in the Spirit. This is part of the strategies against the enemy. Why do we pray in the Spirit? When you pray in tongues, the enemy has no idea what you're praying and cannot plan anything against it. Hallelujah. You're praying God's perfect will. Thank you, Lord. If you haven't gotten baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking other tongues, reach out to us and let us pray for you. Matter of fact, right now you can receive it in your room. Say, Father God, please fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive it. Oh, Abba, Father, and then you just receive that Spirit from God and let that prayer language come forth and the enemy will not know what you're praying and he cannot make any plans against it. Hallelujah. Now, he also says in this verse, pray with perseverance. So don't just pray always with prayer and supplication in the spirit, but you got to persevere when you do it. We have the armor of God on, and then we're praying the word of God, the will of God, and we're making supplications, requests unto the Lord. He knows what your requests are already before you request them, but it's praying to put it into action. You're praying a prayer of faith with perseverance because faith without action is dead. It puts things into motion, okay? Hallelujah. So don't give up in prayer until you have the victory. We call it, in the body of Christ, we call it praying it through. We pray, we pray, we pray until we feel we have a breakthrough in the spirit and you feel victory and you can shout hallelujah and thank God for the answer. That's praying it through. Hallelujah. You need to practice that if you don't already. Whoo! The next part of that verse shows us that we need to be watchful. We need to watch and pray. Be spiritually alert when we pray. We persevere and we watch out for the enemy because we know that the enemy is out to steal and kill and destroy. And so we have to be watchful of that, not in fear of that. It's like being, uh, you know, in old times they had the big walls, right? Like, uh, you know, the story about you know, uh, Jericho, right? The walls came tumbling down and the old song that... There's a wall and the military would stand up on the top of the wall and they'd have their bows and arrows and ready to fire at the enemy when they approached. And so that is like being watchful. You need to be up on the wall watching and being ready at all times with your armor, the full armor of God on, being spiritually alert throughout the day, continually. And I want to remind you in the first part of the verses here in Ephesians 6, uh, verse 11, it says we're to stand firm with the armor of God. we got to stand firm. See, when you wear the armor, there's no reason for you to cower down in fear. We stand firm. There's no reason to turn around and run from the enemy. You can stand firm and block with the shield of faith and attack back with the sword of the spirit which is the word of God hallelujah we know God is with us and we can face the enemy with complete confidence and get out our weapons and take victory in the name of Yeshua hallelujah amen see we remember we all remember the story of David and Goliath see we see uh, King Saul he thought that Goliath was too big to fight but David thought that Goliath was too big to miss. See, we got to have the right perspective when facing the enemy. What's your perspective when you face the enemy? See, I already know that I'm on the winning side. When you know you're on the winning side and the Lord is there with you to fight with you and protect you, you have no worries. You have no fears. Hallelujah. Because Yahweh is my protector, and he's your protector. Thank you, Father. 
See, we know in that story of David and Goliath that the, Philist the Philistines turned and they ran when they saw that their giant hero was killed by David. Sometimes we need to set an example. <laughs> see, your enemies will also flee when they see you stand up as a warrior in the kingdom of God and you fight the good fight of faith. See, the Bible says that if you resist the enemy, he will flee from you. Well, you know what? If you scare the enemy by defeating other enemies, he's going to flee from you. <laughs> His army will flee. They will be intimidated by your victories. Hallelujah. However, just know this, that when you take victory, when you fight and you take victory, yes, many will be afraid of you. They will not want to approach you. The enemies, the, the, their army will flee. But you know what? Sometimes more enemies will come out to attack. See, because when a fighter becomes the world champion in the ring, and everybody knows about it, they see his victory, it seems that many other fighters come out and they challenge him because they want to be recognized as the champion. You'll have people to challenge you. You'll have the enemy, other demon, demonic spirits, and people being used by Satan that they will, they will want to come and challenge you because Hasatan wants to defeat you. But as long as you keep your armor on and stand strong in faith, he's not going to defeat you. Amen? You will always have the victory. So many people are deceived because they listen to evil spirits that tell them lies continually. Just as Hasatan was using the Pharisees by convincing them that Yeshua was an imposter. How many lies have you listened to from the enemy? Let that sink in just for a moment. How many lies have you believed from the enemy? Thank you, Lord. See, they did not humble themselves. The Pharisees did not humble themselves and listen to God. You know why? Because they were afraid of losing their personal power, their power, instead of submitting to God's power. It's called pride. The very thing that got Lucifer cast out of heaven with his other fallen angels. They wanted to kill Yeshua because they thought that he posed a threat to their religious traditions. And that they would lose their following and their support. So they wanted to take him out. We must always, church, listen. We must always humble ourselves to Almighty God and listen to his word. We have to listen to his word with a humble attitude. Lord, teach us. Come on, somebody there say, teach me, Lord. Show me your humility towards the Lord. Just say, teach me, Lord. I have much to learn. Teach me. Come on, just put it there. Teach me, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We've got to be humble before Almighty God. We can't be like the Pharisees. We can't be like Lucifer and walk in pride. Thank you, Lord. We cannot be, you know what? We cannot be spiritually mature and close, and close to God by following our own carnal understanding. We've got to learn to walk in the Spirit. And you cannot walk in the Spirit if you don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You cannot have the Holy Spirit living inside of you if you've not repented and accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior. See, pride does not save you. It separates you from Almighty God. Humble yourself before Almighty God and invite Him into every area of your life. Everywhere. Everywhere. Submit to His Word, the Holy Scriptures, and learn to love how God loves and pray that He will pour out the spirit of wisdom. He said, if any of you ask for wisdom, He'll give it to you if you don't doubt, if you don't waver. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, thank Him. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Father, for your spirit of wisdom to be poured out on each of us as we humble ourselves to you 
and we receive it by faith. We stand as mighty warriors in your kingdom. And I thank you, Father, that we will not be defeated, that we have victory through Yeshua. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. I hope you guys have received from God's word today. Before we dismiss, come on, if somebody received anything, just say, I receive. Just type it there, I receive. I receive. I receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Before we dismiss today, um, I want to invite, I want to do a prayer of salvation and invite those people that may watch our service online uh, to have the opportunity to ex uh, receive Yeshua, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior. And I want you, as uh, those of you that are part of the body of Christ, please uh, join with me in prayer. Start praying for them right now in the Holy Spirit that they will come, they will repent. And we will reach people from the north, south, east, and west. They will hear God's word and they will repent and call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. If that's you, if, you watch, if you're watching this sermon, uh, this service, and, and you say, you know what? I want to be a soldier in the army of God. I want to make sure that I'm, I am saved, that I am victorious, that I am on the right side, the winning side. Then I want you to pray out loud this prayer with me. Don't just think it. God says we need to pray, not just think. Hallelujah. Join with me right now. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Yeshua. I repent of my sin, meaning I turn to you and away from my own will. I submit my will to you, and I ask you to forgive me of every wrongdoing in my past. Everything that has separated from me, I cast it out, and I submit to you today. I confess Yeshua as my Lord and Savior, and I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me power to be a witness on this earth. I commit to growing in your word, to learning, to humbling myself and being a disciple. Please teach me your ways, Lord. Give me wisdom. Give me peace. Comfort me and guide me by your spirit. Show me how to live for you. And I speak right now against the enemy, Hasatan, and I, I command him to flee from my life every area of my life, in the name of Yeshua. I thank you for saving me and writing my name in the book of life. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise the Lord with me. Thank you, Jesus. If that was you, you prayed that prayer. The Bible says all the heaven, all the angels in heaven are rejoicing for you right now. Because you've repented, you've come to the Lord. They're having a party for you. Hallelujah. But it doesn't stop there. The Bible gives us direction, tells us what we need to do to be saved, to continue to follow him. And he says, those who put their hand to the plow and look back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So I want to encourage you to keep moving forward and don't look back. The next step is you need to, you need to make sure that you're in the word of God every day. Read God's word, spend time in prayer every day. Get closer to him. Continue to have a heart of repentance and humbleness, humility. Make sure that you commit to get water baptized. That is a commandment from the Lord that, that we get baptized. It's an immersion. It's a type and shadow of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. We go under the water, immersed in the water completely, like dying with Christ. And then we come up, raising with Him. Hallelujah. Just as He was risen from the dead. And we, we repent and we give our life completely to Him. We take up our cross daily and we follow him. Yes, you'll receive persecutions. People will not like you because they're following Satan. But you know what? To live as Christ, to die as gain, and there's nothing more important than following our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. Hallelujah. Now, those of you that are part of the body of Christ, I would like you to join in prayer with me. Um, 
your pastor has been receiving some attacks from the enemy. And uh, of course, uh, uh, I am going to continue to practice what I preach and stand and, and take victory. Hallelujah. But when we join together, the Bible says when we join together, there's power and agreement. And so uh, let's come together according to Matthew 18 um, and uh, pray in agreement. Father God, we come to you in the name of Yeshua. And we thank you, Lord, for your protection. We thank you for the armor of God. We thank you, Lord, that we have victory in Christ, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And I speak against every enemy that tries to attack me. And I command you, Satan, Hasatan, to flee. Every demonic spirit, every foul spirit, I take authority over you in the name of Yeshua. I command you to flee. Bow your knee right now to Yahweh in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. 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 Angel of the Lord, thank you for taking, uh, uh, protecting this ministry. I pray, I command you to send you forth to take care of that situation. And we count it done right now. We thank you for protection, Father God. And we will not walk in fear. We will only walk in faith, trusting in you in all of our ways and not leaning on our own understanding. In the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. Thank you for staying a strong, close family, our fit family, our fit church family. And um, remember to continue to keep your armor on, pray daily, continue to reach out, invite people to these virtual services. It's a great opportunity for you to invite people. As a matter of fact, every Saturday, a good opportunity uh, to like, I think you can invite people just right away from your, uh, your device and just have them come in and listen to the sermon. Uh, you can also uh, share it on your page so that we can uh, lead more people into God's kingdom and help them to grow in their relationship with God. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Let me see real quick. I'm going to do a double check, see if there's any uh, comments that I need to uh, be aware of. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Miss Linda. Yes, thank you, Hezekiah, for joining in with us. Thank you, Miss Pamela. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. We got 91 comments today. Thank you for your participation, family. But how come I can only see four of them? <laughs> All right. Well, God bless you. Uh, I also want to remind you that we still um, have a responsibility to give into God's kingdom. So please uh, don't forget uh, your faithful tithes and offerings. And you can go to the link on our Fit Church page here. Click the link uh, to our uh, Fit Ministries PayPal account. And you can give your offerings there, pay your tithes there. If you could do that, uh, we've been really short these last uh, few weeks uh, due to probably nobody coming to our physical service and um, um, having probably some financial struggles themselves. But that's the perfect time for us to give and to show our faith and trust in the Lord. So thank you so much. God bless you guys. I love you. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Hallelujah.